Everybody left me because I don't have a PhD in English. They say in English that uh, Uruwath, Eme Uruwath, uh, is that something like that? In English. Mambalis pa ina konga ina manasabaka? In the French. Kevin, you know anything like that? Uh, in English they say that uh, the longer the bull stays in the stall, the fatter <coughs> is a proverb that uh, indicates the, the power of consistency, of uh, <coughs> inconsistent. And uh, that the more consistent we are, the more we grow and become better. That's the, the, the main part of that statement. <coughs> the more a bull stays in the stall, the fatter and the bigger and the greater it becomes. And uh, one day Paul told Timothy that when you preach, have a lot of confidence because you know the person you learned from Timothy is very consistent. This morning, I want to start by celebrating one fellow who has been very consistent in this church. And uh, watched him grow and is maturing, and God is bringing his ministry to the level of manifestation. And uh, I listened to him by accident, and uh, I was blessed by what God is doing in him. Uh, some of you don't even know that he's here because he never displays, he never shows. But, just a proverb I've given you. Also, there's another proverb among the, among the Kisi people that the longer Ugali stays in the fire, the better it becomes. Is that true? Mm -hmm. I mean, I woken up in the morning and here in Kisi, they met Ugali at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and you walked out and you wondered if I knew the hole that Ugali is coming from, <laughs> I would have discarded my boga mm -hmm. and I would enjoy it. As a young man, the Lord is raising the manners. It's very, very consistent. He's never missed a service here. He sits under the teaching. He has never wanted to do anything. But in the process, God has been cooking something wonderful inside him. And he's coming up strongly as a very extremely able, insightful, and spiritual Bible teacher. And uh, so much so that I'll be confident to have him join our teaching team in this church and begin to bless this church. Join me together and celebrate everyone God in Jesus' name. When you are this church, you stand up and you wave. <laughs>
very very big ascent. And the Bible says God answered the prayer of the best. If you have been praying the prayer of the best, I want to guarantee you an answer. This month, if you ask our our treasure of the fillers, we didn't start the month with anything. Nothing in our account. But God has been so gracious. The clustering work here has taken close to 200,000 shillings. And as we sit here, every shilling has been paid for. Let's talk to the Lord. The Lord has it's God doing it. And I'll share this this morning because I'm not a preacher. I think preaching is about giving sermons which I don't think I'm interested in anymore. I would like us to bring God thinking into our lives. And God has been so kind and so, so good to us as MCC. And uh, I want us to encourage you. Join the wall. And when you hear a peace for money, don't get tired. If you don't have it, don't give. When God gives you, give. Are we together on that? When God gives you, give. When you don't have, give by prayer. And God will always give you something to give. Right now, you don't have money. But I'm estimating that our uh, main goal will be about 50,000 shares. And I'm trusting God that me and my family could be able to, to do that. No? And uh, when I say I want to do that about 50 k I'm looking at the second part of the prayer of the rest, enlarging me. God caused me to have 50 k That's part of enlarging me. I don't have it. It's not within my means for the next 20 days. But God, could you enable me, enlarge me, remove the limits, the financial limits, so that I can do it to your glory. So we need the prayer of the best God answer. I want to repeat again. God answers our prayers. So keep praying. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. Uh, I am suspecting. Don't quote me. I am suspecting. Can you say suspecting? I'm suspecting that by the grace of God, that our windows and doors might be fixed before we go to Christmas. I'm not prophesying. I am. Tell you never he's suspecting. I'm suspecting because they now are not going to be the one who is going to be the one And when you're working with the Lord, whether it is on his project or your project, and remember your project is God's project, there is something called supernatural acceleration or divine acceleration. Can you say divine acceleration? Can you say it again? Divine Say it again. Divine acceleration. In the Bible, Elijah is standing on Mount Carmel and he's praying for rain to come. And he sends his servant to go and check the side the rain normally comes from. In Israel, they know the side the rain comes. I think even if you see those of the Lord, you know in the direction that if you see the clouds, you know that rain is going to fall. And the Kisi people will tell you exactly how many minutes are remaining for the rain to fall. So even Israel, they know that. So Israel, Elijah tells the servant, go and look on this particular direction and tell me what you see. Um, we can preach a whole sermon on that. But the fact is, Elijah is praying, but he's telling the servant to check out if God is answering the prayer. 
That's why Jesus said, watch and pray. A truly born again believer, whenever you pray, you need to pray with your spiritual eyes open. When um, Eliezer went to look for a wife for eyes, he made a prayer to the well. Then the Bible says in Genesis that he looked to see how his prayer was being answered. So it's not just blind prayer, but as you pray, you watch circumstances around you. You watch the movements. As, as your leader, I'm currently praying for the windows and the doors. But I'm also watching and praying. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm also listening to the environment. I do not know where the windows are going to come from. I don't know. I have no idea. And if God is going to answer the prayer of windows, God is going to use people. So my ears have to be open to people. And everything God is going to do in your life and in my life, God is going to use people. And you need to be a people person. So Elijah also sends the servant to go and check. And the servant says, I can see a cloud, a sign of rain, but it's so small. The size of a human fist. That's nothing. That's what I see. But Elijah tells him, you see a small cloud. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. <laughs> Did you get anything about that cross? There's a difference between that which is visible and that which one can see in the spirit. I want to encourage you and me to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Elijah says, you see a small cloud, there's no hope, but I hear a heavy rain coming. I wish I could prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that even me as I stand here, I can hear. Though what you have in your hand is very small, though there's no hope, though things are not working out for you, but allow me to say, if you stay faithful to the Lord, I can hear the sound of an abundance of rain coming upon you. Abundance of rain. There shall be showers of blessings. And uh, then it just stood up and went on back up with the king and he told him, take the fastest chariot and take the fastest horse and get the best rider. If you delay, the rain will come upon you. And the president of Israel, Ahab at that time, if it was our president, William Ruto, he took the best Mercedes Benz. Or he could have taken a Subaru for that matter. Subaru or the Benz. A or a Subaru. And Ahab took off at a very high speed for Jezreel. And Elijah walked to go down until Ahab disappeared, running away from the rain. Then the Bible says that Elijah got hold of his cloak and held it with his hands so that it doesn't trip. Even spiritual people take precautions. So he held it like that. And he began running on foot. A few minutes after Ahab has gone, and he's running on foot, the other guy is on a chariot of horses. The Bible doesn't tell us what happened, but finally the Bible says that when Ahab reached Jezreel, according to my Bible, Elijah had already cleared the first cup of tea. Elijah had reached, sat down, taken a shower. The guy was relaxed. And you ask yourself, what speed is that? It's a supernatural speed. And that was a natural speed. That is what you call spiritual acceleration. That is when the Lord begins to move in your life. You overtake those who went ahead of you two hours ago. You might not have a chariot. You might not have a good parking lot. You might not have a bank account. 
but you overtake people who are stronger than you. You overtake people who are going ahead of you. There is something called spiritual acceleration. And I pray that if God is going to answer your prayer at the best, may the Lord not only answer your prayer, but the Lord give you spiritual acceleration. That you know what tech, even those who are ahead of you. God answers prayers. And he answered the prayer to this. But this morning I want to share on something I want us to reflect on something called conflict. Conflict. Is a fairly involving sharing. But I take my sharing this morning on verse 9 of First Chronicles 4. It says, Jabez was a honorable man, for Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. His mother called him Jabez because he bore him in pain and he lived in pain. Lomi, are you here or you're there? You're both. Okay. Uh, there is conflict in that verse. Yet living in pain. That's a conflict. He was more honorable than his brothers. Maybe somebody could help work with the projection so that it doesn't have to be the only one. And you were talented, and if you think you are, I think you're smarter than him. What I'm going to share is a bit tough, so you get your. Well, he's a man of honor. He's more honorable than his brothers. And yet, he's born in and lives in pain. Honorable, yet in pain. The conflict I want to bring here is what God calls you and what the God's word says he was more honorable than his brethren. That's what God called him. But his mother calls him pain. And there's always that conflict. And if you're jealous, the Christian and asking is, so who am I? Am I honorable or am I pain? I suspect each one of us sitting today or watching us live could be having the same conflict in your life between what God has called you and what you are with them are calling you. And we live in this conflict most of our lives. Paul explaining this conflict later on, he says, the things I want to do, I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, I do. And he says, who shall deliver me from this mighty conflict? And Jabez had a conflict in him. Between what he is, what I said, my ground, So you on the ground. You stand up, you say, I'm born again, I'm blessed, I'm favored, heaven bound. Like in the ground. That's a conflict. Now, the only difference is that the best did live with that conflict. He dealt with it. He handled it. But he did handle it in his power. He handled it in prayer. When he went into prayer, 
in a moment of prayer, he was able to break that yoke. And he was able to break the pain. And when he broke the pain, the honor for him. I want to suggest to us this conflict is resolved on our knees. But it's resolved on our knees because when we get into prayer, it's not empty prayer, not religious prayer. It's a prayer where you and I meet God. And God in his own power intervenes. And the kingdom of darkness is destroyed and the manifestation of God's will begins to operate in our lives. And the best time to the God of Israel, and the Bible says he cried to him in prayer. And conflicts are real, so he didn't pray, he didn't just whisper prayer. He cried out. When the Bible says he cried to God in prayer, it's a desperate, deep prayer. God deliver me. That's why Paul says, we shall deliver me. It's a cry from his heart. We shall deliver me. And so I invite you and me to pray. Prayer. You may be praying and fasting. We, we could be having several conflicts here. For example, it was his painful background and past. I know the current preacher has given us short cuts, you know, do this, have anointing oil, whatever, drink some oil. Those are really just short cuts. But Jabez didn't go into that. He engaged the God of heaven. He engaged the God of Israel. I don't know whether he prayed once or he continued in prayer. I met some years ago, I met a young man who was a, a leader of a Christian union in a college and he was battling homosexual feelings. There was a conflict. On one side, he thought he was born again. On the other side, there was this pressure to be homosexual. You see, like Jabez, he could have just lived with it. He could have just accepted it. But the best never accepted it. This young man came forward and he wanted to talk to God in prayer so that that conflict is resolved. Another time I was preaching somewhere and a young man came in the altar where I prayed for them and when I was going to lay hands on him, he held my hands. He said, Pastor, I'm addicted to drugs and alcohol. Even now I'm drugs. I want deliverance today. Here he was bound in drugs. And yet a university student and drugs had gotten him out. By the way, at that time he was out of campus. He was at home because of drugs. And that night he was back with the Lord. What did the Lord do? God delivered him. He went back to campus. He finished his course. He graduated. He's now practicing medical doctor. Prayer. Brothers and sisters, there could be conflicts in our lives. We can allow them to eat us so that you live with a demon life. Jabez could have accepted to live with the pain and also to live with the honor together. But he never accepted the status quo. In prayer, he resolved that conflict. I don't know the conflict you have. But think about it. In the Bible, there is a man, our father, Abraham. The father of faith in him. He met God. And the Lord said to him, I will bless you. And I will make you have a great family. You will have, you have so many children, Abraham. And God left him. And he was a happy man. But God had promised to give him children. 
Several years later, he's still childless, and Sarah is still barren, and they are walking with God. So one day, God told him, Abraham, I'll bless you. And he said, Please, God, stop it. How dare you say you're going to bless me? And my slave Eliezer is inheriting all my wealth. You see the conflict? Blessed yet childless. God tells him, Change your name to Abraham, meaning the father of many. So he's called a father, and the father is childless. Sarah is called a mother, and she's barren. We have a conflict there. What God calls you, and what exactly is going on. Qua ground? Talk with me. Qua ground? And Abraham is dealing with what has come from heaven and the reality of the ground. At night, he sleeps next to Sarah. And Sarah says, like, Abraham, maybe you didn't understand God. Yeah. He said, I love children, but maybe it's another way. Conflict. And Abraham says, Sarah, how do you feel? He said, I may do something. I can't have children. It's not possible. And then God comes and says, Abraham, Sarah, you love children. And they walk in the daytime and they say, is it true? When what he says is not aligning together with what we are. When you read the promises of God and when you look at your own life, the promise is not coming to pass. So Abraham had that conflict and they organized a few things to handle it. Number one, they say, Sarah said, now, Abraham, go take my house down. Go into her. She will have children on my behalf. And see how desperate a situation can be until a woman gives her husband to another woman. A conflict can bring us to a point of shamelessness. When your own integrity no longer matters. What matters is I want that child by all means. And Sarah throws her dignity down. The only thing a woman will never throw down that is willing to share the husband with a house girl. Not a slave me and be a house girl. And some of our conflicts can bring us very low. They can make us quarrelsome. They can make us bitter. They can make us desperate. They can make us to become very rebellious. When a, a, a conflict is not resolved well, we, we, we can even lose our Christianity. No longer reading our Bibles, no longer praying, no longer even serving God because of the pain and the conflict. And so the Bible says, Abraham also went into prayer. When I is a spirit, kind of hope. Oh, praise the Lord. God answers prayers. Whatever conflict you and I have, only God can resolve it. I know there are people who are having a moral conflict, fornication. One side you want to be a saint, you want to be a believer. On one side you are overwhelmed by pornography and all that kind of stuff. You can subject yourself to it. But you can also trust God to handle you. You can trust God to break that conflict. Only God can do it. Hmm. I've been to seconders that have become secularized and religious. That some of you are going to get into that trap. Some years ago, there's a guy who went all over the country recruiting girls. 
these girls were taken for one week seminar and they were made to make a, make a covenant that they remain virgins until they're married. That's not Christianity. It's a pure religion, secularism. Because they made the covenant in the meeting, I'll stay a virgin until marriage, and that even the young girl is with a boy. And guilt begins to eat them up. You make those vows a thousand times you break them. I'll announce to you, you might not have the power to break the power of sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can break the power of sin. And only Jesus can deliver us. Paul says, who can deliver me? Who can deliver me from this conflict of the flesh? Then he said, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ. It's only through God you are able to break that addiction. It's only through the power of God. And so, Abraham, conflicted, deeply worried. Because he goes into Hagar and actually they get a child called Ishmael. The God increases the conflict after Ishmael is born. God comes and tells Abraham, Abraham, thank you for Ishmael, but he is not the one I was talking about. Sarah will still give birth. He said, oh my God. When Sarah heard those words, she laughed. Hey, hey, she laughed. And God told Abraham, why is Sarah laughing? And Sarah said, I did laugh. And God said, you laughed. I heard you. And after some days, Abraham went into prayer. But that day, he didn't just go into prayer. The Bible says, and Abraham was told by God to bring a sacrifice. I was together, I was together. He had prayed, but that time God said, bring us up a sacrifice. And God told him the type of animals and birds that he should bring as a sacrifice. So sometimes when, when, he, when God moves you to, 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 do, to do something sacrificially, he will also tell you the sacrifice to bring. And if you read your Bible, it's an amazing story that Abraham cut all the animals into two pieces. The key word there, if you're making notes, is cut. Covenants were always cut, never made. In my mother tongue, they would cut a dog and a book. So he told Abraham, take the animals and cut them. Tell your neighbor, cut. cut. And then the animals will be arranged on the left-hand side of the altar and on the left-hand side. And in between, they would leave a path in those days. And in the Bible days, even before Abraham, when you cut the animals for the covenant, then both of you would pass between the cut pieces. It was called the covenant walk. And you walk up to the end. And as you walk, you say these words. If I break this covenant, may I be cut into two like these animals. You actually cut yourself. And so Abraham is told by God, cut the animals into two, cut them and set them there. Then God says, now stand there. And Abraham knew how covenants are made. Follow me, I want to be slow. So Abraham is expecting God to tell him, Walk between the animals so that Abraham, you don't break the covenant. That's why some of those vows you are making, I'm, I'm bringing you to, I'm helping you in the next few minutes. But instead, God tells Abraham, step aside, Abraham. I know you. Your flesh, you're weak. If you pass through those animals, Abraham, you have no capacity to give the covenant. You'll break the covenant and die like a dog. Abraham, you will fail many times. Abraham, you will never keep this covenant. And say, step aside, Abraham. 
I, the Lord, will walk between the animals. And God was telling Abraham, if I break this covenant, I'll be like this animals. God was telling Abraham, I will keep my covenant with you, Abraham. You might doubt me, you might fail in this covenant, but I, the Lord, I will never fail. And that's the day Abraham knew that Jehovah God is different from other gods. Other gods required the people to walk between the covenant. But in this covenant, only God has shed his blood. Only God promises to keep his covenant. And that day, Abraham knew that God would keep the covenant. And Abraham, and you see from that, if you read your Bible, Abraham faltered many times. Abraham lied a few times. Abraham doubted God a few times. And as Abraham was inconsistent, God remained consistent. And I'm here to tell you, my dear friends, even if you are unfaithful, God will still remain faithful. Amen. God will answer your prayer. God will see you through. You might doubt him, you might fail a few times, but God will never leave you. God will never forsake you until he fulfills all that he has promised in your life. Prayer, communion with God, resolve the conflict. And when, Ish, when Isaac was born, God said, call him Isaac, meaning he laughs. And we challenge you, I don't know who God, I don't know who is laughing, I don't know whether it's Isaac laughing or Abraham laughing or God is the one who is laughing, but call him Isaac, meaning he laughs. There's a verse in the Bible that says that the Lord will laugh. Maybe the Lord is laughing. Maybe Isaac will laugh for the days of his life. Maybe. And what do you think Abraham felt the day he held Isaac in his hands? If you are Abraham, what did you do? See, when you look at the womb he has come from, if you look at the person who has given birth, he laughs. Tell your neighbor, he laughs. No. I think Abraham just laughed when he received the boy. There's a verse that the Bible says that when the Lord visited us, we are like a people who laughed. Our mouths was filled with laughter. And I pray that the Lord may also fill your life with laughter one day. And you may laugh. And the Lord should say that Sarah said these words. We call him Isaac because people who laughed at me will now laugh at me. People will laugh. I want you to imagine a 70-something-year-old woman going to the supermarket to buy pampers. For who? Can we talk? For who? For both of them. Some of you are young. You will know one day at 80 something old ladies use pampers. So she's the only one who bought two. She's 80. The kid is also young. And when she goes to buy the stuff, people laugh at her. He laughs. That conflict in Abraham was solved in prayer. My brothers and sisters, be weak in everything, but never become weak in prayer. Lack time for everything, but in your busyness, create time prayer. You will benefit more sharing your issues with God than sharing them with human beings. There's a man called Jacob. He had a conflict in his life. Remember when he was born. Sorry, before he was born, God had told the mother that the older we serve, yeah. talk with me, I'm not preaching, we're just talking. The older we serve, the younger. And one day he exchanged his blessing and he took his brother's blessing. So he became blessed. Then he went to Isaac and he was literally blessed. Then he began to run around the world like a The conflict is blessed 
yet running away. He ran from a son. Then he ran from Laban. He was a fugitive, he was a vagabond. You see, he's been blessed. And yet there's a problem. A great challenge in his life. Something he could not handle. He can't go home. He can't face his brother. He cannot see his father and mother. So he's blessed materially. But there's something his life is not blessed. His name is still called Jacob, the supplanter, the one who rakes people out of their blessings, the one who steals what does not belong to him. Blessed and a common at the same time. That's a conflict. What kind of man is this? He's cheating and he's also being cheated too. When he goes to Laban, he thinks he's a, a super con man. <laughs> and he cons that man for many years. And then when the time comes to get married, he meets his match. Laban is uncle. They must have shared the same genes. He's a better con man than him. <laughs> Jajana. There was a program in TV called Mujajana Mujab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. So he gets married at a big wedding, they eat, and the woman is in a gown, and he is happy, he has worked seven years, he has paid the full dowry, people dance, people dance late into the night. Then they show him the hotel where he's going to have his honeymoon, and they go and sleep in the night. He wakes up in the morning, he goes to wash his face in the bathroom, he comes back, and who does he find lying on the bed? The ugly one he never wanted to marry, said, my goodness. What's this? What are you doing here? By the way, who are you? And the woman said, I'm your wife. From when? <laughs> In pajamas, he goes to his father and he said, What have you done to me? And the father in have told him, What have you been doing to people all your life? That's where the English people say, You are taking a good dose of your own medicine. You gave your brother the same medicine, swallow it also now. <laughs> you see how conflicted he is? God has blessed him, but this is just an issue. Something is not adding up in his life. The Bible says, as he's traveling back, he doesn't know how to face his brother. He lets the family go away. He remains alone. See, brothers, we are not talking about the cash and the wedding and We are talking about the alone prayer. Me and my God. Not where people tell you what to pray about. This is me and God. The Bible says he walked up and he came to a place and he was alone and he prayed and said, God, when I cross Jordan, I have nothing in my hands but a stick. I'm going back so rich. I'm not worthy. And as he was praying, tell your neighbor as he was praying. Say it again. I think God likes men and women to pray. While he was praying, a man appeared. And Jacob is a born fighter. Who are you? And he's alone. He believes everyone is an enemy. And whoever he meets, you must fight and win. And there are people like that, maybe sitting next to you, who believes everybody around is an enemy. And he gets hold of the guy, and the guy gets hold of and they wrestle up around him for the morning. And he tells the guy, the man tells him, You're strong man, let me go. Say what? You messed up by night. You are not going anywhere. And the man says, let me go. I am God. He says, I don't care who you are. If you are God, bless me and you go. The guy said, I bless you later. He said, no, you bless me now. If you don't bless me, you're going nowhere. And that night, God touched him. And broke him. 
and he changed his name from Jacob. He became a prince. There's that encounter in prayer that changes your life and changes your name. May that happen to us in Jesus' name. When he left that place, he was not only a changed man, but he had a new name. He was now a prince. And uh, the conflict is over because he met God. I know the conflict you're having in your life. Between what he says you are, you are, and what they're making. In the book of Judges, I think chapter 6, I'm not sure. The Israel are in bondage, they're in slavery. Actually, the, the Philistines destroy their crops. So they are so poor. They are in poverty, they are starving. Their fields are the grazing fields of the Philistines. And the Philistines will wait until they have grown and weeded and done everything. When the wheat is just about to be harvested, they bring all their animals and everything. It's the story. The Bible says that Israel was left without sustenance, no food. And so if you manage to get some wheat, you had to hide it. Then the Bible says there was a man called Gideon who was a coward. How do I know he was a coward? He was threshing the wheat behind the house, hiding it from the Philistines. Because of the hammering of the Philistines and the beating and the subjugation, they had accepted that we are weak and hopeless. But when they read the stories of the Bible, they heard of a mighty God. And Gideon is reading that we are the people of God. We are the mighty servants of the mighty God. We are the strong nation that nobody can beat us in this land of Canaan. Now, can you go around? Talk with me, go around. So he's walking behind the house. For ground beaten into forty. But he's very clear that I'm going to be above a note. I'm above a note. Like he was result in Mitiani, bottom ten. I'm not going to be clear. I don't know. Chicky. Someone talk with me. Say amen. The Bible says you. You will be the head and not, but you check the results from the tail. The Bible says you will not borrow, but you shall lend. When you look at your phone, any message coming is reminding you <laughs> that. How do they write it? Dear customer. A levy will be charged on your loan. Unless you act quickly. Dear customer, we are almost enlisting you in a, it's called CRB or CBR. Yes. 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 But when you read your Bible, you will not borrow. You will? Yes. How many have read that verse? Yes. Quagrao? <laughs> Quagrao? <laughs> you have deferred your learning three times. Could pay the examination fee. But somebody tells you that he shall supply. How many of your needs? How many? All. All. And you did pay for exam fee. Is it not confusing? <laughs> you have tried all medications, and he says by his stripes you've been healed, and yet you're sick. It's a conflict in video. How is this? And the Bible says one day when he was threshing the wheat, a man visited him behind that house where he was hiding. A man visited him. And brothers and sisters, that's the visitation I'm talking about. It's not just enough to go to church and see. But it would be better if in church we have what you call divide encounter. 
meeting with God. And when the man met him, the man said, Arise, you mighty man. He said, Come on, give me a break. Mighty what? Give me a break. What? I'm not mighty. I'm a coward. I'm hiding. How dare you call me mighty? To be said, do you know who you're talking to? I come from Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. And my family is the smallest family in Israel. My father is the smallest man in Israel. And he married the smallest woman in Israel. So we just small people from a small tribe. We are small minded, we think small. And God says, You mighty, I'm not mighty, you just don't know. The conflict comes in when God calls you mighty. And you don't feel mighty. And genetically, you don't come from a mighty background. What shall I do? And for Gideon, that short encounter with God would resolve the conflict. And will help him to accept what God said. God said, Arise in the strength you have. For you, Gideon, you, you shall deliver Israel from the Philistines. Can you snap three people and tell them, You? They tell them, You, 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 you are the man. You see, Gideon could have said, Oh God. Another man, another man from another tribe, maybe Judah. But God said, No, you're mighty. And the Bible says, God looked at him and said, You're mighty. You're. But when you meet God, this conflict gets resolved. And I pray that in our prayer times, we may experience the whole. David, the youngest born in Jesus' house, shepherd boy. No ambition, no great goals in life. Just this piano, just taking care of you. Consistency. David has no desire to be great. He just loves the Lord, he just loves his sheep. He's not trying to be anything. In current culture, that's not good. All of us try to be something. But let me say it again. If you want to be great, be great in doing a small thing. For those who are faithful in small things, God will put them in charge of God. The way up is the way down. The late Godfrey Griffiths, the founder of Star High School, said, Greatness is not in the size of your office, but if you're given, comes to clean. May you clean it so well that whoever comes around will say, Who we'll clean this cup? If you're given a room to clean, do it so well that whoever sees it will admire it. Great people do small things in a great way. <clears throat> David never left sheep to go and become king. Yes, did he shepherd it well. If he was an usher, he was a great usher. If he was a worship leader, he was a great he was an intercessor, he just did his job well. <clears throat> Every morning, he takes his sheep out. No wonder God said one day that, I will give Israel a shepherd like David. Sometimes the devil 
cheat you into being smart. In the process, you might achieve your goal but lose the blessing of life. If you have an employer, be faithful to your employer. If you're given a job, work on it. I graduated from the university to be a teacher, and the day I was graduating, I repeated those words after the president. When he gave me power to read them. But as I stood there, I also said, God, I'm going to be a teacher. I said, Lord, if you enable me, I want to be the best teacher. I served as a teacher for 13 years. I might not have been perfect, but I gave my students the best. I'm proud of my 13 years as a teacher. I resigned to serve God in the preaching and teaching ministry. I've not done my best, but I try. I'm not asking you to be consistent. You can jump everywhere, be everywhere, and achieve nothing. A rolling stone gathers no moss. Trust God to be consistent. David was consistent. And he established himself as the great shepherd of his life. If you go on YouTube, uh, Keith Green has sung the songs of David under the title of an album called Songs of the Shepherd. Just doing the small things, but doing them well. Here in this church, I know Felix will always be there. I can count on him. I can, I can count on Felix. Cyprus is well today. But I tell you, since Cyprus came to handle his wounds, the fillers and the rest of the elders can tell you, we can count on symbols that should be here every day. And we celebrate her. Yeah, we're really glad because of what is doing. Pray God may bless her. Consistently. Consistency. Not that she cannot do any other thing. But our son in symbols also in some Bible study, every Wednesday we do Bible study here, we pray and fast. She's very excited. And David was just like that. But, but there was the shepherd and the king living together. Shepherding was the lowest profession. Very low. Shepherd boys, shepherd girls. The king was the highest priest. And the two met in David, the lonely shepherd, and yet the king of Israel. But one day, you read the Psalms, you see his prayer life. You hear Psalms like, As the deer panted for the waters. So my soul longeth after you. You alone are my hands, desire and I love to wash you. You alone are my hands.
So early in the morning, will I seek you, O God? The songs of the shepherd. He was a man of prayer. And times he was in pain. It was never easy and rosy for him. There are times he felt like dying. And he sings songs like, I think, Psalm 63, 64. 63, 64, 65. That tells you that every time he was in, in turmoil, in pain, he would pray. Yeah, my cry. There's a time he prayed, there's a time he was worshiping, there's a time he was crying. And you sing songs like, Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer from the end of the heart. Shall I call unto you? And when my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. That is higher than I. For thou hast been to me a shelter in the storm and a strong tower from the enemy. Songs of prayer. Psalm 91. Him that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. David dwelt in prayer. He stayed in prayer. He was a man that was moving on his knees. And brothers and sisters, the conflicts you are having, like your parents, I give you a solution. Prayer will tackle them. The Bible says in Psalm 19, I have found my servant David. It's Psalm 89. I have found my servant David. So where did God find him? In prayer. Where have you met with God? In prayer. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. He shall be my king. The kingship, or if you like, the kingliness, was bathed in prayer. Was bathed in the prayer cross. David could have remained a shepherd the rest of his life. But he bathed it. In the Bible, there's a widow called the widow of Zarephath in the days of Elijah. And when I read that story, I get very interested. This is my conclusion. Now, read the story with me mentally. That Elijah was being fed by a bird called uh, Kunguru. This Kunguru, the guy's a technician, so you need to wash him first. Oh, you know it. Yes. Yes. Now, the Bible teaches that one day the bird never came. And uh, the guy is alright, just like the bird never came to bring the meat because the brook of the river had dried up. And so Elijah did eat that day. There's no food. And so God comes to Elijah and he says, Go down to Zarephath. I'm reading it. Huh? And you'll find a woman gathering sticks. Look at the next verse. I have told that woman to take care of you. So God had already talked to that mama. I'm sending a prophet to take care of you. So Elijah gets down and meets the woman from Sarah. And guess what? God told Elijah, I've already spoken to her. But then there's a conflict. The woman has got one dish of bunga and two spoons of oil. That's my interpreter, don't worry. That's how people stand. Now, 
Look at this conflict. I'm sending a prophet to take care of him. The woman has no money and has no food. This is when God tells you, I want you to support my work. And you are in full And every other image in a good death. This is where God tells you, excuse me, I want you to minister to my son. And I do nothing in your hands. Conflict will always be there. The conflict I have now is I hear God say that these widows will be up before you go for Christmas. But from my mathematics, nothing is adding up. Both for me personally and for the church of God. But the challenge we have here at MCC is so far we have seen the hand of God. How many we have seen the hand of God? Mahani to Mefika, actually, where we have reached to fill up our strategic plan. We are five years ahead of our plan. But not because we are able or we are fat bank accounts like it is the main similar to any more. Yeah. When God moves, it's amazing. We have a testimony. The only thing we have as a church as we gather here today, the only encouraging thing we have is testimony. God has done it before. He can do it again. Mm -hmm. But there's a conflict there. The woman is told, take care of the man of God. And she has enough hunger for one chapati. And she shares a conflict with the leader. She says, God told me to take care of you. But there's a problem. I can only make one chapati. And I want some. We intend to eat it with my boy. Then we die. And the leader says, don't be afraid. Just make that on Jamati. Bring it first to the Lord. And once you give it to the Lord, from today on, Mama, you will depend not on your Jamati. You will depend on God. Mm -hmm. That was the thing. You give it to God. You depend on God. By the way, the principle of tithing is that I give my first 10% and is a way of telling God, I depend on you. When we don't give our tithes, we are telling God, I can manage on my own. Which is actually true. You can actually manage on your own. It's possible there are millions of people who don't serve God with the resources and they are still managing. But for these guys, the case of the woman and Sarah is like, you give all you have, depend on God. That's a conflict. How many of us in our resources are able to depend on God? And I tell you, it's like a cliff situation. Some of you know Mr. Cliff Hannah. Some friends went hiking on the mountains. And as they went, some of them disappeared to the mountain like Manga Hills. And if you see the cliff of Manga, they came to a place and one guy got lost. And as he was walking by the cliff like this, he slid and he fell down. It was so deep, but when he reached here, he got hold of the root of a tree. And it was cold in the night. And around three in the morning, four in the morning, the tree was coming off and his hands were tired. And he knew if I leave this place, I'll drop down and die. Then he prayed for the first time and he says, God, help me. And a booming voice cut into the darkness saying, you want me to help you? He said, yes. 
And the voice said, I am God. Will you obey me? He said, yes. And the voice said, let go of that tree. He said, huh? <laughs> let go of the tree. <laughs> if it is you and me, he actually held his tight and closed his eyes. And now lady said, please go help me. He said, you want me to help you? He said, yes. Let go of the tree. He held tight. Four times he was told to let go. Four times he could not. Four days later, the rescue team was searching. It was very cold, it was winter. And they saw a man dead, hanging from a tree. His feet were only three meters from the ground. If only he knew. You know, I just walked home. You see, God knew how many feet were remaining. Cliff Hanger died because he couldn't believe God. But for him and you, he thought he was going to drop into the deep end. But for you and me, when we let the tree, we are going to fall in the hands of the Almighty God. God's hands are there for us. So this woman was being told, let go of what you have and trust God. In my life, with the resources God has tempted me, the times he has told me to give what I have, everything. And then I knew he wanted to go there. There's a story I want to share with you of another conflict, uh, the story of Moses. Moses is being told to go to Egypt and talk to Pharaoh. Now, those of you who are learning, you know, some of you who are learning, 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 who are So God told Moses, who was a stammerer, go and talk to Pharaoh. And he told God, I don't know how to speak. I'm a stammerer. I cannot be a diplomat. This is not my profession. This is when God calls you to do something that you are not qualified for. And when you look at your body, you are not even fit to be there. But God tells you you are doing. When God tells you to do something that you know, oh, I can't do that, I'm not a teacher. There are times I've joked with some guys, not joking really, I'm saying, you preach to us on Sundays, oh, no, I can't, I can't. Be careful. That's what Moses said, I can't, I can't, I can't. By the time I approach you to come and minister on a Sunday, God has spoken to you. Yes, the truth is you can't. Moses is told, Moses says, I can't talk. But here what God says, did I not make the mouth at the time? I will be with your mouth. How was the issue resolved when you begin to depend on God's ability and not your ability? We can't. None of us can do much. But humility is not saying, I can't teach, I can't preach. Humility is when you say, Pastor, I've never done it. I don't think I can do it. But let me try. With the help of God, I can do something. What is the sound? With the help of God. God's work is not for the experts. God's work is for those who are available. Just avail yourself. Relax and let God use you. Jabez conflicted greatly. A honorable man but living in pain. Prayer we resolve the contract. Some of the fears within and conflicts you want. The things you want to do, you don't do. The things that you don't want to do, you do. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to a life of prayer. Because God answers prayer. One day Jesus talking about prayer to the disciples. Can't you pray for just one hour? 
I know you're busy. But I'm, invi I'm, I'm inviting you to secure just one hour of prayer every day. I, I know you spend two hours on social media, on TV, but there's a time I ask myself, if I spend one hour on social media and I spend one hour on my knees before God, which one has value? And I choose to do that to be just valuable. I know one hour in prayer will change my life, will change my environment. And I'm praying the prayer of the best. God bless me indeed. God increase my territory. God put your hand on me. And God deliver me from evil so that it doesn't cost me. As we have continued, there are people who are praying and fasting to pray on their best. God's going to break through for us. I invite you. I have a strong feeling before the Lord that this prayer of the best is taking us into the sun. And God will answer every prayer. Pray about it. Fast about it. I was preaching in a Roman school the other day. At the end of the time, one of the teachers said to say, Thank you. Spoken to me. My life will have been the same. I've had it today. I've not been around for some time because God, you are aware, gave me an assignment to raise leaders for sure. And for the most of November and October, I've been visiting our schools, talking to them, praying with them that God may make them to become what they're supposed to be. And this season from September. I've been raising Jezebel's wherever we went. And I want to ask the other people who are here, be stay, be consistent. Avail yourself to be mental. I didn't want to tell you this, but I want to tell you this. Uh, the younger people who are here, the some of you from college. Um, God wants you to gather here. God wants you to be mental. I have certain things to teach you. And certain things to impart on your life. There's grace, there's anointing that God wants to pass over to you. So please, be available. Be available, be available, be available. God wants to do something very tremendous in your life. Something deep, something unique, something special. Jabez is a man of conflict, but the conflict was the soul in prayer. Moses was a man of prayer. One time Moses told God in Exodus, if you're not going with us to Canaan, I will stay with you in the desert. What was Moses saying? I'll stay in your presence. Even if it's in the desert, I will stay in the presence. What is Moses saying? Even if I have to stay in the desert, better stay with you in the desert than in a palace where you are not there. What is telling God, I would not like to be a millionaire without the presence of God in my life. I would rather stay with God in whichever condition. And Jabez prayed 